ITIP was inspired by our new microlearning feature in RISE 360. If you haven't checked that out yet, I highly recommend taking some time to play with it. But as I've been looking at some of the templates that our amazing content team has put together for microlearning, I was inspired to play with colors and shapes to create some dividers between sections in microlearning. This training refresher template was really what inspired me as I was going through it. I hit this area here where we've got this diagonal line and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then as I continued through, I saw this triangle shape here. And that's really what made me go, I want to give this a try. Let's see what I can come up with on my own here for this. So my tip is just going to be kind of going through some of the steps that I went through for this process. I'm going to leave you with some of the stuff that I created so you can take it and run with it and make something on your own. So first of all, what I did was I found a cover image that I wanted to use. And for this one, I, I settled on it because it had some bright, fun colors. It's not a color palette that I would normally choose to work with. So that was good for kind of pushing me outside of my normal boundaries here. And I like this because it has three strong colors that I could build my palette on. So I've got this turquoise color, this pinkish purple color, and this reddish pinkish color here that I decided that those would be my three colors that I would use for my palette. Thinking then about how I would use those colors in a rise course, I decided that this turquoise color I liked as something that I could use as a background color for a lot of my blocks. And then from there, I decided that this reddish color would be my main accent color throughout my course. This pink color I decided to hold as an additional color that I could pull in for things if I needed to. So with that decided, I needed to figure out what these colors actually were. So I used this color picker tool that I have as a, it's a Chrome extension tool. The link for that is in the resources for this webinar. But what you do with this is you select this option to pick a color. It opens up this tool that lets you hover over the color. You can grab it. When you click on it, then it brings it up into the color picker here. And then you can grab the value for the hex value for those colors. So as you can see here I grabbed the purple and I grabbed the reddish pink color as well. What I like about this is this holds that information so you have that with you and it's it's easier to carry it to other areas for working with. So then once I had my colors and I decided that I wanted to use this turquoise color as my background color, I wanted to make sure that that, that checked the boxes for accessibility. So from here I went to this website Web Aim, which has a contrast checker for colors. My foreground color in Rise, that's my text color, and it's it's a black, it's a shade of black. I when I actually went through this, I did use that color picker to grab that black color. This is not it, but it's similar. And then here is the background color that I used for here's my shade. And then I wanted to make sure that that passed all these boxes. If it doesn't pass the boxes, it will indicate that here as well. But once I was happy with the contrast level, then I decided to bring in my colors into this gradient tool because I wanted to see how they flow, how they flow together. So I brought in my first color and my accent color. I could bring in that purple color as well if I wanted to, to see that here. But I've got my colors, and then with this, you can kind of go across the scale and grab other colors if there's things that you like. So maybe I want to grab a couple different shades of these colors to have those available in case I decide that I need them for something. So I've got that. I like it. I think it looks good. I'm happy with those, those colors together. So from here, I went into PowerPoint, and here I needed to decide what my canvas size would be. Ultimately, I, I played around with several different sizes here. Um, I kind of settled on this 
five inch by one and a half inch. But I'm thinking now that I want to bring that down even smaller, maybe to a one inch or potentially a half inch, and just play with it to see what it looks like. But for this, I just settled at the one and a half inch. So I created my canvas. Then I came in to view and my slide masters, and I built the palette for my colors. But I dropped in my color palette here. You can see I've got the, the blue and the red and the pink. Come in, and then I started to build my dividers. This is the fun part. So my first look that I wanted to do was kind of this fade effect, this gradient, if you will. So I decided that I wanted to do a white into blue gradient. So I came in here, this is my slide. I clicked on the format background option that opened this format background area. And then I select gradient fill. And then here is the gradient stops. It defaults to two for gradient, you can add more with this button here if you want to. But I used white and then the, this turquoise color here for my theme. And then I reversed it for another, so I just duplicated the slide and then I reversed the colors so I would have the reverse of that gradient fade. And then I created a fade where I had the blue into the red here as well. From here, I decided to start playing with shapes for my dividers. So I started off with this triangle shape here, and that's just coming up to insert and then doing a shape from the shapes tool here. There's all sorts of different ones. I played with quite a few, but give that a try. You can also try drawing your own shapes. When I draw with a mouse, it tends to look like something a two-year-old has created. So I shy away from that but maybe you are better equipped to do that than I am. But I created my triangles. I created this look first. I liked it. I duplicated my slide, came in here, and then I came up to size and position, and I rotated that so I had the reverse of it. Here I came in and I added those two colors together. There's two ways that you can go about doing this. One is you can do what I did here, where I have the two colors here in PowerPoint. Another way is I can come in here, I can right click on my shape, and I can save as picture. And what that's going to do is that's just going to save that shape. And then this area here where I've got the secondary color, that's just going to be transparent. So then when you bring it into Rise, you can use the background color for your block to fill in the color here around that triangle. So that can be really helpful if you're anticipating needing to change that background color. Here again, I played with a different triangle to, I wanted to create that diagonal effect that we were seeing in that template. So I set this up again, flipped it. So I got the reverse effect here as well. And then again, adding my two colors to that. And finally, I decided to combine two of the looks together. So I've got my triangle with the gradient fade here. And that is just, again, coming in, setting my fill as the gradient fill, and then setting up my gradient stops here. And I created a couple different looks for that. Finally, I created one where I had three different colors on my gradient. I ultimately didn't end up using this in a course but I could see that where you could use it, and I think it could be a lot of fun. So once I created all my looks, I went through, I came up to File, I did Save As, you can come up here to File Format, you're going to drop down to PNG or an SVG, and then when you do that, what happens, I'm not going to save them again because I've saved them a lot, but what they're going to do is it's going to export each of these as a separate slide. So I've got my slides. I've got my slides there, and then now I can come into Rise. Here's the, my first example. This is one where I decided I wanted to do that fade effect. 
You can see you can bring in that fade into the block with the background color. And then as we come down, I've got the fade from blue into white. Here I've put those two images back to back to create kind of this fade line divider. Here I've got some additional text. It's kind of fadey. And then as you go down, here is the fade, fade into that dark color. I like to end the course with some sort of image or a contrasting color so it signifies to the learners that they've hit the end of the course so it stands out to them. That's just preference there, but I think it, it's a nice way to, to visually signify the end of the course. So that was the first example. My next example here came in. This is where I have that diagonal lines. I thought this was fun. Here's those two blocks back to back. What I did when I was going through this was I created my first course and then I duplicated that course and then I just came in and replaced the images here. So here I've got that line again going down here to this. Here's the triangle. So I've got the triangle effect here and here. I kind of like how it sends my eye down the page. Back to back kind of create this diamond effect, which I thought was kind of fun. It might be a little thick here. So this is kind of why I want to try uh, playing around with the size of my image. But we've got that. I thought this was fun how it created this bow tie shape here. And then as we come down the page, we've got this bottom border here. Now my final example is where we've kind of combined that fade with the shapes. And as we come down, kind of see how that looks, the diamond back. All right, so I will make the, the, that PowerPoint available on the resources page for this webinar. Check it out, play with it. If this is something that you're interested in doing, I would love to see what you create, what you come up with from this. If you do uh, share it in the community or if you share it on LinkedIn, I would love to uh, take a look at it. And I hope, hope this helps give you some inspiration. Thanks.